Oh my god. Ah. Wow, hi everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. That's my morning prayer. Frankly speaking, it's not because that song is sung by my bishop, 
but that song it ministers to me in different ways at different times and I learn a lot and so it's my number one no back up this and that i don't see none of that it's not that i have any problem against any of those things so you have money to do all the drama and the uh, people look more for those things you know the lighting the dressing the this the that the, la, la, la. this one is not even like it's a life thing or it's a whether it's a record whatever people i don't know me it's just my god papa god now you if you pay attention to the words not the person papa god thank you darling jesus thank you oh god holy spirit thank you amen let me not say the dress i'm wearing you say hey yeah, hey, Bishop has become your idol. Oh, no, Mio, she's not my idol. Oh. <coughs> That's not what she taught me anyway. Yeah, but um, when somebody plays a significant role in your life, they play a significant role in your life, acknowledge it. Especially when it's the Lord who put your paths to cross, took his time from 2013 to 2019. To make people now connect the way he wants you to connect. The book is coming out soon. Okay, apart from that, this is morning devotion. And our morning devotion is taken from Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 12. The theme is plentiful refreshment. Charles Spurgeon just takes out the path where their life will be like a water garden. But I want to read it all. Sometimes some will see and not go and read. And since it's the scripture for the morning devotion, let me read it. I'm reading from the KJV version. For me, that is the it's. I'm not looking anywhere else. Sometimes when you have too many versions and interpretations, and you want to understand, understand, amplify, amplify, amplify. In the end, you just get knocked out. So, just sometimes, just stay you. Just stay you somewhere. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 12. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the head and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all and their soul well here he says their life so you know when your soul goes few your life has ended. So I think that is what it refers to here as life. It's another version that just says they will. I'm like, okay. Whatever be the case, let's continue with our morning devotion. You can go and read from all the many versions that you can read from. Oh, to have one soul under heavenly cultiv cultivation, no longer a wilderness, but the guarding of the Lord, my goodness. Enclosed from the waste, walled around by grace, planted by instruction. Instruction. You have to obey. Ah. Oh. Lessons that I have learned these seven days. Trust and obey to the T. If not, you just start again. Or sometimes his mercy and his grace just allows you to make some adjustment and continue. But the more you grow with him, that to whom much is given, much is expected is not a joke. 
and I'm still at Chombi level nursery school. Hey. I can only talk about my mentor. That's the only person I've been close to. And that's the person who mentored me. I remember when she told me long ago, it's in the book, that she is under that, that kind of instruction, like even the dress to wear, the color, I did not understand at that time. You go understand. May the good Lord give people such mentors also. I'm not wasting a banner. You go, you go, you don't go, you don't go. She accepts, she accepts, you don't go. Ah, I don't do that kind of thing. But I can only talk from my personal experience. And she is an integral part of my personal experience in my work with God. I cannot water that down. Whatever any other person thinks about her, ah, 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 Jagari and Okosuk. Okay, oh. Enclosed from the waste, walled around by grace, planted by instruction, visited by love, weeded by heavenly discipline. Oh yeah, heavenly discipline. Heavenly discipline. You want that one, or oh, you just want to be turning around? You'll be disciplined by the world, though. But you think that nah, I'm in control. By the time the world has finished disciplining you, you don't even know how to creep back to God. You don't know. You yourself, you cry now. Or you just continue letting the world discipline you and living such a shallow life. I was just coming here and um, I was trying to get to my life setting. You know, when you are doing a life, after that other lives come up or other suggestions for you or whatever. So I was trying to get back to my own homepage, but I've forgotten how to do it. So I just saw something about this um, uh, South African star, <laughs> Trevor Noah. And now they are saying that um, he has given up love for success. He likes his luxurious life. And the last, the high, one of the longest relationship he has had is four years. In short, I just left very fast. I looked for that thing and left. I was like, you see how people make choices. So there's nothing wrong in me choosing to serve my God, to follow him, and to give it all up to him. Than for me to live to please the world. Eh? No, Mio, my God. Oh. Because our relationship is the one that I cannot leave. And as long as I'm on his side, he's on my side. So physically I can look depleted. But all the other, li, 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 especially spiritually, I'm good. And physically, I'm still here. Oh, my goodness. So I would like that heavenly discipline because I am guarded by divine power. Once favored soul is prepared to yield fruit unto the Lord, by their fruits you shall know them you know some people don't want to give their lives to the lord because they don't want to bear any fruit for, for what they want to enjoy themselves live their one best life now what do you call it one yes i think it's live your best life now one life to live and um, what do they say again tomorrow is not guaranteed so eat my friend drink you know how the enemy sows those seeds that night when you are sleeping now. You wake up and you start looking for where there's the next program, next activity. What are you going to say to those kind of people? At some point, you allow the Holy Spirit to just do his work. Convict. Who could say what to me? Until I myself surrender, the Holy Spirit there with me. Okay. But a garden may become patch for lack of water, and then all its herbs decline and, and are ready to die. How soon would this be the case with you if the Lord were to leave you in the if the Lord were to leave you? Hey, I beg take me to go, carry me to go. 
Carry me to go, Papa. Carry me to go. I beg you. Don't leave me. Oh. In the east, a garden without water soon ceases to be a garden at all. Nothing can come to perfection, grow, or even live. When irrigation is kept up, the result is wonderful. So you better water your garden, you know. He go put you for garden, but you have to water it, oh. Okay, oh. And when irrigation is kept up, the result is wonderful. The world might not see my garden, but I have a garden, very beautiful, on which I water. Morning, afternoon, evening, if, anyhow, anytime. Oh, to have one soul watered by the Holy Spirit uniformly. My goodness. So I don't even have so much work to do. If I invite the Holy Spirit consciously, intentionally, every day to come help me. And the Holy Spirit comes. It's not a joke. Yesterday, this me, who has already bathed and sat here like this and everything. Yesterday, I had to ask the Holy Spirit. I had to pray. I had to beg. Holy Spirit, please. I have to bathe. I don't have that energy. So when it's time, eh, just be pushing me. Let's go. And as I pushed me and we went and we bathed, I came back to the room. And I slept, and I know I done my morning devotion, so there's some that I have to write and stuff. I was the Holy Spirit, I beg. Yeah, I know it's already past midday and everything. Even if it's before 6 p.m., let's do this. By 3 p.m., I had done it. You yourself, you just hear a voice saying, get up, sit up. And you feel that energy come. And as soon as you are done with that now, you are just putting the bag down, you are just lying on the bed. This morning, I'd already had it in me that there has to be some change and good and all of that. So I was still feeling one way as I was putting the room in order. So I put my hand on my bed like, let me even just sit down a bit. Don't lie on that bed. My God. I removed the hand very fast. Just went me quietly to the toilet. Bathed with cold water. Did all what I had to do. Uh-uh. And this is me sitting here doing morning devotion, feeling much better than yesterday, physically. So yes, the Holy Spirit does that. Every part of the garden having its own stream, plentifully, wow. A sufficient refreshment coming to every tree and herb, however thirsty by nature it might be. Continually, each hour. Bringing not only its heat, but its refreshment. And wisely, each plant receiving just what it needs. In a garden, you can see where the water flows by the large green vegetation. And you can soon tell when the Spirit of God comes. Oh Lord, water me this day and cause me to yield you a full reward for Jesus' sake. Amen. Oh my goodness. And then this morning I list I listened to um some praise while I was in there. Yesterday I didn't even want to listen to anything. There was no energy. So I listened to uh what medication are you taking for increase by uh, Pastor Victoria Orenze? Um uh, very simple medication. The word of God. Praising him. In times like this. I now understand why. Oh my God. See some of those my mamas. They are sick. They are, dead. They are praising God. They are praising God. They are in the hospital. They are praising God. They are praising God. Oh my God. Father God you deserve my hallelujah soon. There's no human being that can um, that can father me like you, Papa. Even Pampa. 
it might not be the way I want. And I might grumble, I'm a child, right? God's time and God's ways are not our own. That's why when I thought it was going to be a half day thing, it's been seven days off. That means the lessons, what God told me this morning. I told you, you were going to the other side. There will be a storm hanging there. On Friday, Thursday night, I got to the other side. I felt it. The battle that had taken place, it took its greatest toll on my body on Friday morning. People were worried I would die. Now, on Saturday, there was still another lesson to learn. Even on Sunday and Monday. And so, I was just thinking today, like, did we not get to the other side? Did I say that there will be no lesson on the other side? Papa, I'm sorry. So that is what it is all about, my people. Let somebody not sugarcoat it for you. Yesterday I was talking with my sister how I was wondering where long suffering has gone to in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't want to, a lot of people, hear some kind of words that can make us think that or remember that we have something to, we have a part to play, right? And so, several of those um, versions have translated into patience. I don't know if they're really related long suffering and patience, because you can be patient without suffering. So, what's, what's bothering you there? You're just patient. You're waiting at the teller or the long line there in the bank, but you know that you're going to get your money. Is that suffering? No. That's just patient. Just wait. Put your earplug, be listening to something. Soon you have your money, you go. But long suffering, <laughs> you commit yourself to that. It means long suffering. How long, God alone knows. How intense that suffering, God alone knows. But when you do those things, and it will not be a one time thing, why will He also give you long blessing? And why should anybody be bothered with that? Okay, my people. That's where I end up for today. So grateful, you know. 23 minutes today. Yesterday was like 18 minutes. Sometimes those are indications too, right? We really thank God for this. I'm still here. Yeah, means I definitely still have more to do for my father. Um, yes, we are going to the village on, um, I always say we because I just, my Uga knows that we are going together. No, Uga me, I cannot go me alone. No. My Uga, Holy Spirit, we are going to the village on Friday. I'm not bothered about how. I'm ready. I received a donation of shoes yesterday. The first one from my own son. I'm just so grateful. He knows how much I pray for him. Just want the Lord to bless him over and over. My baby Marie had sent some clothes already last week when I was there. My God, and those clothes are still on Papa's chair there. <laughs> oh my God, the other I was wishing I could sit there. I just saw the clothes. And I remember that when I was putting them there, he said, put these clothes here until when you want to go. So I cannot even ship them. <laughs> When you have a relationship like this with God, my goodness, you laugh, you cry, you do all kinds of things. It's so beautiful. I never knew I could get here. I didn't even know what it was. I can only encourage you to try. Anyway, if you want to connect with us, our links are there. Uh, you want to join my sister princess to study the word of God, a chapter a day. Oh yeah. Do yourself a favor. The links are there and you can catch up where, you know, she's uh, in Songs of Solomon. Today will be chapter 5. So I'm catching up in the morning with um, previous chapters. And then in the afternoon, as much as possible, 
I connect to um, listen and study a lot or oh, whenever I can, but I do make sure I do. Okay, and then my bishop, oh, yes, my bishop, unraveling um, conference, 1st of September. Oh my God, I cannot wish, let me not wish. I have to be in the village, but I'm so grateful that it will be recorded. So um, I will go and um, watch the recordings or the, get the message. I want the teaching. I don't even want the sightseeing and visiting prison, all of that. Ah, I've done that. I don't want, I want the teaching. I remember how God taught me a lesson when I just got there. And I uh, said, oh, I eat Ganyan Jalom. Nah, nah, nah. She was also excited to pump me with food now. Oh, day one, oh, oh it was day two. Ha. Thursday. When did I get there? I think I got there on Tuesday. Tuesday night, like Tuesday, breaking Wednesday. We got home by 1 a.m. And she came to pick me up with her daughter. My God. Because as soon as I landed in Accra, straight bus stop went to Kumasi. So, um, breaking Wednesday, uh, we were preparing for an all night vigil. For that Wednesday, so uh, I was also tired, so I was catching up, and then we had that vigil on that Wednesday night. Now, oh, yeah, Thursday morning, like something ejected me from bed. Say, hunger breakfast, what do you want? Bab lunch, bab okay, let me go and get you Ghanaian rice. Ghanaian rice, eh? Good, my friend, did you come here to eat? Let me just teach you a lesson now like this. Come and see my stomach like na balloon. Me will went there with flat stomach. Hey, Papa God, I'm sorry. And it was paining. Oh, I was like, oh, not two more. What is this now, God? Oh, yeah. She just saw me the way I was making like that. She just prayed, got into her car, went and got me something. I took it once. And... By the time I, I slept, or did I even sleep? I continued making my thing on, say, at about 1 a.m., I just closed my eyes, sleep. 2.30 or 2 something, something just got me up again, like, eject, bath. I got up, stood in front of the mirror. Stomach, blood, gone. Ah! Okay. Madam, I told you that you do 24-hour fasting, so... I just understood the message and until I left that I even had to pray and ask for permission to go and eat pizza pizza is something that I like I don't I'm not a fan of pizza but at least go out with the family so okay I knew how many slices I was allowed to eat <laughs> in short the journey is not for the faint of heart that's all I can say the race is not for the swiftest, nor the other. Ah, God help us all. Have a... Today is what? Tuesday. <laughs> Full of testimony Tuesday. And um, may God bless us all.